Hi, I'm Art Bergeron, and this is a seminar about giving. Um, I am now semi-retired from Myrick O'Connell, and I've done that. I've cut back on my regular hours so that I could focus on this really important topic, which is really about giving to your community, giving back to your community, uh, whether you're alive or after you die. And um, so, I'm, but, but I, to illustrate what I'm talking about, I've used my old friends Frank and Mary, which if you folks have watched my seminars before, you know that Frank and Mary um, are, are, um, have their three children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Uh, I always tell, have told people for years, if you're old enough to get the joke, you're old enough to be my client. And, and, and their goal in life is, goals in life are fairly simple. They want to live in their house until they die. They're still living in their home. They want to be buried in the backyard. They want to leave something to their kids. And by the way, in general, and I would say this is true of 80, 90% of the clients who come to talk to me, they want to minimize taxes. People just hate paying taxes to anybody. Um, and that's just the way, and I won't make any comment on whether that's good or bad. It's just the way it is. So we're going to talk about that a little bit while we're going through. So Frank and Mary in this case are 80 years old. And, and these details are important because uh, as we go through this, we're going to talk about uh, making gifts in a way that um, <clears throat> will allow them to minimize taxes and therefore make their gifts the most, most effective. But to understand how that works, you understand, understand where they're coming from. So Frank and Mary uh, are 80. They have um, a house that they bought for $100,000 a long time ago, and it's now worth $800,000. That's not a surprise. By the way, they live in this illustration in Southboro, Massachusetts, because I'm actually doing this presentation uh, in Southboro very shortly. So I decided I'd just base this on that. Um, so they bought, so they own their house. They bought some Berkshire Hathaway stock on a tip that Frank got in 1984 from one of his friends for $920,000. It is now worth $400,000. Um, Pretty amazing, isn't it? So Frank, Frank and Mary both worked. So Frank has an, uh, has an IRA now of about $800,000 that he's accumulated. Mary has one of $400,000. They got random savings of $100,000, total value $2.5 million. Now, for many people to say, oh my God, that is so much money. Well, it is to some people and not to others. Um, but I'll just tell you my median uh, estate plan in Southboro over the last 14 years that I've been working at Myrick O'Connell is $1.5 million. It's not nothing, right? So as to their income, Frank and Mary, so they've got th their total income in 2024 approximately, uh, or, it, or it is um, Frank's Social Security, 12 times $2,000. So, so he's earning about uh, and, and for the for tax purposes, uh, uh, eighty five percent of that of that social security will be taxed. So the, you do that calculation. That's what is what his um, re his remaining income would be. Uh, um, Fra Frank's RMD, his required minimum distribution out of his IRA, out of his eight hundred thousand dollar IRA, is five percent of that IRA if he's eighty. So that's forty thousand dollars, right? Mary Social Security. We did the same kind of calculation. Uh, on her social security check of 1500 uh, a month. Um, and, and then Mary's RMD is substantial too. Mary's RMD on, on an IRA of, of $400,000. Once again, she's 80. So according to the IRS chart, she needs to be getting, taking out and paying taxes on 5% uh, of that money if she's 80. So their total income for the year is $95,700. And the federal tax rate on the on that on the top dollar in that income, the dollars that are above, I think around eighty nine thousand, um, is twenty two percent, and that would be true until their income becomes much higher, like over two hundred thousand dollars. Their Massachusetts tax rate is a flat rate; that's always the same at five percent. So that's where Frank and Mary are financially. So they've got these three kids, um, um, whom they stake; they're still close to. But the only services that Frank and Mary really use now from South Row, where their kids grew up and played soccer in the fields and went to the school and went to Algonquin, um, the only things they use now are the senior center uh, and the library. Uh, and those are the two things that they find of real value. Although, of course, when you go to town meeting and you're looking at the war warrant for the budget for the year, um, th these are the two things that are like way, way down on the list. You know, there's police, fire, schools, you know, payment of the debt, yada, 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 and then there's this stuff. But that's really what Frank and Mary use. So 
first of all, about giving in general. Suppose that Frank and Mary just decide they're going to lend, to, to not lend, but give some money to their daughter Mary um, because um, Mary Jr. is buying a house. And so they decide they're going to give her $200,000 to, to help pay for the deposit, right? Um, what is the tax consequence of that to Frank and Mary or to Mary Jr.? None. None. Um, here's gift tax 101. There is no Massachusetts gift tax. There is a federal combined uh, estate and gift tax system, and here's how it works. Uh, if you die leaving $13.1 million, uh, or excuse me, $13.61 million uh, this year, uh, you will pay an estate tax. If you leave everything to your spouse and you haven't, and there is no estate tax, and then when your spouse dies, um, the, 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 your spouse can use the, your estate tax there. So actually, the total estate tax threshold is about $26 million for Frank and Mary, but we're going to assume it's that 13.61 figure. While you're alive, as a federal, estate a federal gift tax matter, you owe a gift if you make a gift, unless you qualify for one of the two exclusions. The one that everybody knows about and the one that nobody knows about. The one that everybody knows about is there's an amount that, that you can give anybody in any year and that um, without, without causing there to be a gift tax. And that amount used to be $10,000, but this was passed a long time ago, this estate tax bill, or the gift tax bill. And so that amount has changed over time with inflation. And this year it's actually $18,000. Everybody knows that one. Then there's the one no one knows about. In addition to that exclusion per person per year, uh, Frank and Mary each have a lifetime gifting exclusion, gift tax exclusion, equal to the estate tax threshold, which is now $13.61 million. So unless Frank and Mary are going to be giving away more than $13.61 million during their lives, there effectively is no gift tax. The whole gift tax thing is a myth. And as far as Mary Jr. is concerned, the receipt of a gift is not income. She doesn't have to report it in any place. She doesn't pay any taxes on it. <clears throat> so that's what happens if you give to any individual, to anybody else, right? Um, what about though, if Frank and Mary want to make a gift to the senior center? Maybe there's a there's a, a you know a campaign going on, or they're just looking for some kind of money for the annual fund because the friends of the senior center provide a lot of money to help the senior center. Um, they're a they're a, a 501c3, uh, which m most friends groups are. Well. Uh, Frank and Mary, when they make that gift, they're making it because they think it's the right thing to do. But they also, they're also thinking that somehow this is going to benefit them for tax purposes. So a couple things to remember about gifts and taxes. A gift to charity never actually makes you money. You're never saying because you gave away $100, somehow you end, you're ending up like with $110. It like never makes you money. You're, the point of the gift to charity is that it may get you basically a match from the IRS or, for the, or from the Department of Revenue, DOR. Uh, because basically, if you're, if you're making a, a charitable gift that gives you the benefit of the charitable deduction, what you're, what you're doing basically is some of the money you're giving is money that you were otherwise going to be giving to the IRS or the Department of Revenue. So for example, um, if, 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 the, if this is a legitimate tax deductible gift, right, then and go, go to the bottom of the chart, right? For Frank, uh, for, for, um, for the Massachusetts, the federal estate tax on Frank and Mary's income is 22%, as we talked about. Um, the Massachusetts rate is 5%. So effectively, if they were to give away um, $1,000, which it, it, of money, um, that is above the standard deduction, and I'm going to talk about for that, that in a second, then basically Frank is giving away $730. He's all, the IRS is really throwing in the money that they otherwise would have gotten, which is 22% of $1,000 or $220, and the Department of Revenue is throwing in $50. By the way, there is a cap. There is an annual uh, giving, charitable giving cap of 60% of AGI. AGI means adjusted gross income. But if you give more than that in a particular year, that, that, that charitable deduction can carry forward. The, the point though is, for the vast majority of people, including Frank and Mary, right, chances are they're just regular gifts that way are not en gonna end up being tax deductible. And the reason is, you only get the benefit of that deduction to the extent 
that your gift is above the standard deduction. The way taxes work is, first of all, you itemize all of the deductions that are allowable for you to itemize, among others, the charitable deduction, the mortgage interest deduction, the real estate tax deduction, your, your Massachusetts income tax the deduction. You add all of those together, except in the case of those taxes, the maximum of the deduction for those, uh, those two taxes is $10,000. And then you see if all of those put together are more than the standard deduction which you get without itemizing. Now the standard deduction used to be much smaller and therefore the, the, the reason or the benefit of this charitable deduction really covered a lot of deductions. But for Frank and Mary in 2024, the standard deduction is $30,700, right? It's the, the, the standard deduction for the couple is 27,007. And each of them also gets an additional elderly standard deduction. So $30,700. What are the chances that Frank and Mary are going to exceed that number? They've got their own house, but they've paid off their mortgage, so there's no mortgage deduction. There's a, there's a real estate deduction and a deduction for state income taxes, but there's a cap on those two of $10,000, right? They're just not going to get there. So as a practical matter, if, if Frank and Mary are giving that $1,000 to the senior center, chance, to the friends of the senior center, chances are they're not benefiting in any way for tax purposes. <clears throat> so, um, but I, I just want to carry on basically in terms of the way that I'm thinking about this. If they were benefiting, if they were benefiting by giving a thousand dollars and that they're really only giving less than that, another way that Frank and Mary could think about their gift would be to say, well, you know, we're good with actually giving away a thousand dollars, right? We don't care about the tax implications. Well, in that case, what they may want to consider doing, if they're above the standard deduction, is giving away $1,370. Because if they did that, $1,000 of their money would really be going to the Friends of the Senior Center. $300, plus or minus, would be, would be coming from the IRS, because that's what would have been paid in taxes at 22%, um, a 22% tax rate. <clears throat> And, and $70 uh, approximately would have been coming from the Department of Revenue. So once again, that's a way of thinking about you know, how, how, what, what the real that tax consequence of your gifts are. <clears throat> but, th so this leads to a couple of other questions. Y are, is there some way or some asset that Frank and Mary could give, because we know what their assets are, which really would cause there to be a tax benefit so that they'd end up be giving less than the $1,000 and they'd be getting a contribution, very kindly, from the IRS and the Department of Revenue. So <clears throat> they could do that really in a couple of ways. First, what if they took $1,000 from their IRA, money that, that hadn't come to them yet, called their IRA uh, administrator and said, before the end of the year, I want to give, I want you to give $1,000 to the friends of the, of the South Rose Senior Center, right? It doesn't work if you give the money to me and then I give it to the Senior Center, then, then I, I'm stuck with the, with the standard deduction. But if the money comes directly from the Frank or Mary's IRA to the friends of the South Rose Senior Center, then they don't pay any tax on that additional money. So it do, it's not going to affect their current income. Because what I'm suggesting is that what they do is take an additional $1,000 and give it to the senior center. They could actually take one of their other $1,000 and give it to the, and, and, and have it designated to the senior center. Works the same way. But the point is, if they did that, once again, Frank and Mary would be giving $730. The IRS would be contributing $220. And the Department of Revenue would be contributing $50. And that is not affected by the standard deduction. So they'd really get that benefit. One other thing, though, about the tax deferreds is that there is a maximum um, contribution per year out of your tax deferreds of $100,000. Now, next case, remember Frank and Mary had those stock worth $400,000, which if they sell, they would be needing to pay capital gains tax, 15% uh, federal, 5% state, 20%, that, so that's 20% total, 20% of $400,000, $80,000 in tax, right? So what if instead they took $1,000 worth of stock and gave the stock to the senior center? Uh, in that case, 
by the way, this, once the senior center or the friends of the senior center, once the friends had it, they could sell the stock tax free because they're a nonprofit. So in that case, effectively, Frank would have been Frank and Mary would have been giving eight hundred dollars worth of value. The IRS would be throwing in one hundred fifty. That's the capital gains tax they wouldn't be getting. And Massachusetts, the Department of Revenue, another fifty dollars. That's the capital gains tax that they wouldn't have been getting. So once and once again, the gift of stock is not affected by the deductible. So you can give as much as much in stock as you want, subject to as much in, in stock as you want, subject to that general cap that you can't give away more than 60% of your total adjusted gross income. And in addition, subject to the cap that you can't give away more than 30% of your total capital gain in a particular year. So there are two easy ways for Frank and Mary, given their asset situation, to make gifts that really give them this benefit and that, that they're giving less and the, the Department of Revenue and the, and, the, uh, and the IRS are throwing in some money. Now, why won't they do that? Well, for many seniors, and maybe not for seniors if you've got $2.5 million, but even there, most seniors will tell me their greatest fear, you get to our age, death, death is death, right? Your greatest fear is running out of money before you die. You never want to be scraping before you die. And that's why seniors are not typically the big givers in capital campaigns and other things because they, they think they might need the money before they die. So the real question is then, how about making the gift when they die through a legacy gift, af maybe after the two of them have died? Um, and so the first question, of course, they need to ask is, well, don't Frank and don't Peter, Paul and Mary Jr. need the money? Well, yes, I'm sure that they could use the money, right? Chances are, though, unless somebody's got a disability or has got real problems, one or more of these kids really don't need the money, right? Uh, maybe none of them need it, right? So one of the things that Frank and Mary, I think, should consider is in addition to leaving things, leaving money at death to Frank, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., uh, leaving something to the friends of the South Grove Senior Center, right? Or to the friends of the library, the two entities that they really use a lot. So the question is, how much should they be considered giving? Well, <clears throat> as it happens, God has provided the answer to that question, and it's in Deuteronomy 14.22. Uh, that is the origin of the notion of the tithe. The what you should be giving away is 10% of your assets when you, it, it, in general, right? And so it may be that Frank and Mary aren't especially considered, you know, considering whether God's going to be mad if they don't give 10% of their assets when they die. Of course, you know, God may really be mad, if they, but that's a different kind, of, different kind of question. But the point is, suppose uh, Frank and Mary decide to do that, decide to give 10% of their assets when they die. The other 90 goes to the kids. So they've got an estate of $2.5 million. They're going to give 10%, a gigantic amount of money as far as the senior center is concerned, $250,000, right? And the kids get the rest divided by three, $750,000 a year, right? The kids, so the kids aren't gonna die as a result of Frank and Mary making this gift, right? The, the, but then the, the further question is, right? To, uh, what is the effect of, of that legacy gift, right? For tax purposes. Well, as it happens, Massachusetts, as you may know, uh, recently increased their estate tax threshold from $1 million to $2 million. So if Frank and Mary die, or if Frank dies, leaves everything to Mary, Mary dies with an estate of $2.5 million, there's going to be a Department of Revenue that's going to be coming after them for an estate tax of $39,680. Um, if their estate were zero, however, or excuse me, were, were $2 million, however, the estate tax would be zero. And any uh, gift to a nonprofit organization, any legacy to a nonprofit organization, get subtracted from the estate tax. So if they decided in their plan that they're going to leave 10% um, uh, of two, two million five or $250,000, that's gonna get taken off the, um, the, um, the uh, estate tax. So, and if they, if, if they gave a gift of equal to the entire extra $500,000, the estate tax would go to zero. So, one other tax consequence of all this, assume that the kids, like Frank and Mary, uh, are, are, are earning money and their spouses are earning money, and so that they're in the same federal marginal tax rate, 22%. Now, 
it's reasonable to believe that some of those kids are actually going to be in a higher marginal tax rate because they've got two spouses that are both earning money. And assume, you know, obviously you've got the Massachusetts rate. And suppose that Frank and Mary, instead of saying that in, in, in general, that this, that this money, this $250,000 is going to be going from their estate um, to the Friends of the Senior Center. Suppose they actually change the name of the death beneficiary for some of their money on one of their IRAs, so the $250,000 is going, uh, instead of going to, to Frank, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., is going to the Friends Group. Uh, in that case, as a practical matter, um, it, the, the, they're giving some amount of money. The IRS is really throwing in some of the money because it's the money that they would have been paid when Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. took the money out. And the Department of Revenue is, is contributing some of the money. So as a practical matter, Frank's legacy gift was going to be $250,000, right? But suppose that gift is, is, is coming out of those tax-deferred funds. Well, first of all, your, your, uh, your, uh, your, the IRS, therefore, is making a contribution. In this case, $55,000. The Department of Revenue is making a contribution because of the income tax. And the Department of Revenue is making an additional contribution because of the, 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 the reduction of uh, $250,000 in the size of Frank and Mary's taxable estate. That contribution ends up being $39,680. So the legacy is for $250,000. The contributions, the match by your friends at the Department of Revenue and the IRS is $107,000. The money coming out of Frank and Mary's estate is $142,820, or only 57% of the total match, right? So this is a way <clears throat> that, you can, that Frank and Mary can be thinking about giving money, right? Assuming that they've decided they want to make the gift, but doing it in the kind of the, what, what, what fo folks in the business call the most tax efficient way, right? That is, they're getting the match, the biggest match possible from the Department of Revenue um, and from the IRS. Now, I, what's the effect of this going to be on the, on the Friends of the Marlboro Senior Center? I'm going to talk about that in a, just a second. I just want to make, make a couple of other comments. Suppose Frank and Mary decide, I really can't make that gift while I'm alive. I'm so worried about running out of money. I really need some of this income. And suppose, therefore, instead, they decide they're going to make a gift today, um, but keep an income stream coming in from that gift. There are two ways to do that. They can buy a charitable gift annuity. Um, what does that mean? They can give their 400000 and, and by the way, this, this specifically only involves dealing with the stock. They could give their $400,000 in stock to the Friends of the Senior Center. The Friends could sell those, that stock, pay no tax. As a result of all of this, Frank and Mary obviously aren't paying a tax on, on, on everything. They would be paying a tax on some of it. They would, be, they would keep, in this example, and you could pick a number of examples and then the numbers change, they could keep the, an obligation from the Friends of the Senior Center to pay them an annual payment of 6.9% of that $400,000, or uh, $27,600 a year, uh, until they die. When they die, the remainder would go to the Friends of the Senior Center. As a result of all of this, Frank and Mary would end up, for tax purposes, federal and state, having made a, effectively a charitable contribution because they would have reduced the amount of of, of, of uh, capital gains tax they were paying um, by, uh, in, in an amount equal to $178,000. That's the, the amount or the percentage of the $400,000 that would be considered a charitable contribution. As a result of that, they're saving around $35,000 in tax, right? But what, what if they're concerned that, you know, the friends of the, what if, because the, the obligation to pay their payments every month is going to be from the friends of the senior center. What if they're concerned that the Friends of the Senior Center isn't going to manage the money right, isn't going to really make the payments, whatever? They actually have a second option. They can actually create something called the Charitable Remainder Trust. There are two forms of that. In this case, I'm talking about the Charitable Remainder Uni Trust, often called a CRUT, uh, as opposed to a Charitable Remainder Annuity Trust called a CRAT. So these are CRUTs. Um, what you do in this case is you create a trust. You name the trustee. You transfer the $400,000 to the trustee. The trust says that you're going to be getting an, a, 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 a yearly amount, 
until you die. When you die, the remainder goes to the nonprofit, in this case, the Friends of the Senior Center. So the trustee sells the stock. The trustee in this case, because it's a uni trust, uh, is obliged to pay Frank and Mary every year 7% of whatever is left in the trust, whatever that pile of assets is, because this money, they would have sold the stock, but then invested it and reinvested it, et cetera. Whatever that pile of money is at the beginning of every year, at the end of the year, they need to be getting 7% of it, right? As a result of all of this, Frank and Mary will have reduced their capital gains, the capital gains that they were going to be paying on the $400,000 by $47,500. When they die, the remainder goes to the senior center. So the remaining question then is, what's the impact on all, of all of this as far as the senior center is concerned? Well, suppose that the Friends of the Senior Center's goal was to make sure that they didn't have to go to town meeting every year and grovel before the voters and try to get their little share of the entire town budget. In other words, suppose they wanted the senior center to be self-funding. Well, how much money would you, they need in order to do that? Uh, it's fairly straightforward. What you do is you take the current budget. The current budget is under $500,000, but in this case, I round it up to $500,000. You take that budget and you multiply it by 25. And the reason, and, 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 and that ends up generate, and the, so therefore, you get this number, $12,500,000. Why is that significant? Because in, in, in foundation terms, when fo folks are running foundations, they assume that whatever you have in the foundation will just generate 4% in money that can be given back to the charitable organization every year. 4% uh, of $12.5 million is $500,000. So once you've had enough legacy gifts to accumulate $12.5 million, from then on, the senior center pays for itself. No more taxpayer contributions. So how many legacy gifts would there have to be? Well, in Southboro, I've, over the last 14 years that I've been working at Myrick O'Connell, I've done a lot of estate plans in Southboro. The, 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 the average estate plan is with an estate of $1.5 million. 10% of that would be $150,000. Divide $12.5 million by $150,000 means that we need 84 of those in order to, to have enough money to self-fund the senior center. Say that everybody in, in, the, in the room that I'm talking to at the senior center is 70 years of age or older. Those are my clients, 70 and older, right? At that rate, over 30 years, they would need to be getting legacy gifts of about a little under three gifts per year for 30 years, right? And at the end of that period, they would never, ever have to go back to the town and get any more money. So um, the point of this presentation is to help you, know, you, if you kind of identify with Frank and Mary, think about the charities that you might really think are important and figure out the most kind of efficient ways to, to, to make those gifts, realizing that the institutions that you use the most, uh, in this case, the senior center and the library, right, could really use the money. Thank you very much.